What's up you guys, Mike here. So in this video, I want to talk about something you could do to potentially save yourself a lot of money at the beginning of your photography career. Now the issue that I ran into was that the camera was expensive enough having to buy lenses and SD cards and like filters, spare batteries, a tripod. The total cost of a kit can get up there pretty quickly. If you've been doing photography for some time now, you probably already, I'm sure you already know this, but if you're just getting started kind of like I was a few years ago, chances are you're running into this issue firsthand especially with lenses. In fact, there are many lenses out there that are just expensive, if not more expensive, than the camera they're placed on. I'm looking at you, Sony 400mm f2.8. And that is where the topic of today's video comes in, and that is how to get very expensive results for not very expensive prices using vintage lenses like the one I have here. So what are vintage lenses? Well, vintage lenses as the title kind of uh, gives away, are lenses that are older, they're not produced anymore. You can find them on like eBay or Amazon or, you know, reseller websites and such like that. Sometimes you can even find them in like, you know, thrift stores, Goodwill, places like that. But the point is they're, they're not sold anymore. This one and this one in particular were made back in the 1980s. The pro to that is that since the since modern day lenses are so much better in a lot of cases than these are, these you can find for relatively cheap. This one right here you can find for $50 on Amazon. This one right here you can get for $46.79. So when I was first kind of buying all my camera gear at the very beginning of uh, my photography journey, you know, I had the camera, I had the tripod, I had a couple of, uh, you know, SD cards. I think I got a few other small things, but like after that, my budget was pretty much max and I had no other room for any extra lenses to get different looks that I was, you know, that I would want to to go for. And that's when I kind of ran, ran across the idea of using vintage lenses in the meantime, you know, in, in between the, the, you know, the time that you purchase all your gear up front, you kind of max out your budget, and the time you have more, like a lot more money for a really nice lens or two after that. So in my case, I wanted I actually wanted to purchase this lens. This is the Sony 50 millimeter f1.8, but this was like an extra $200 and I just didn't have the money for it. So instead what I did is I, I purchased this Minolta 50 millimeter f1.7 for around $30 at the time. So, so this is $200. This was around $30. They have almost the exact same apertures. They're about the same size. Their focal lengths are exactly the same. The only difference is price, $200 versus $30. It's the same thing with, with this lens right here. This is a Minolta 75 to 300 millimeter vintage lens that was made in like the mid 1980s. It's no longer being produced. Um, this aperture goes from like four and a half to 5.6, I think, something like that. But like I said before, you can get this for $46.79 on Amazon right now. I've, I've personally seen the price of this lens below $40 at one point on Amazon. As in the title of the video, $1,100 results for $40, I'm, I'm kind of doing a comparison between this lens for like $40 or $50 to the, the Sony equivalent 70 to 300 millimeter lens that you can purchase for $1,098. So again, like the focal lengths are almost the exact same. The apertures are the exact same. Almost the only difference is going to be in price, you know, $40 versus $1,100. So here's another example. This is a Minolta uh, 35 to 75 millimeter lens, f3.5 to 4.5. This is on Amazon for $25 right now. Compare this to the Sony equivalent, which would be uh, the Sony 24 to 70 mil, which is almost $800. So you guys can, can probably tell like, you know, vintage lenses could, could save you a ton of money at the beginning of your photography career or on like a low budget uh, scenario. Now, I, I do want to add like a little asterisk with saying all this stuff is that the Sony 50 millimeter lens and the uh, Minolta vintage 50 millimeter lens are not direct equivalent. So, you know, this lens, while a lot cheaper, is not going to be able to produce images of the quality that this lens does. That's one of the reasons this is a lot more expensive. However, in my experience, the quality that vintage lenses like this one and this one can produce is close. So, so in my opinion, the difference in quality between the vintage lens and the modern day equivalent is not nearly as large as the difference in price. So you get a ton of value for what you're paying for with vintage lenses. I will say another thing from my experience, and that is that typically vintage lenses are not as sharp. Now, my, my reasoning for this, which is totally just based in my experience and, and not, you know, 
factual knowledge on research and other stuff is just that um, you know vintage lenses are all manual focus you know these were made for cameras that were being built back at the time these lenses were being built and even if you get like an autofocus lens like this um, you know Minolta 75 to 300 is you know it's not going to you know the manual focus part is not going to work on a modern day cam camera unless you get an expensive you know adapter that will allow that so you will have to be manually focusing as well as manually changing the apertures which you know is not necessarily a, a bad thing because it you know forces you to especially at the beginning of a photography career it forces you to learn kind of like you know how these things work how does focus work how does aperture work you know stuff like that also one more thing one more thing, one more drawback. So these vintage lenses were made for, like I said, cameras that were being made back then. They're not made for modern day cameras. So what you'll more than likely have to do is pick up what's called an adapter. Now in my case, I got this newer uh, MD-NEX adapter to put this old 50 millimeter lens on my uh, modern day A6300. But you know, other than the few trade-offs being that, you know, they're, they're potentially not as sharp, you'll have to buy an adapter and Sometimes you may get like, you know, you know, these lenses have been used. Sometimes you may get lenses with, you know, like things on the glass or whatever. So you may have to, you know, pay to get the, you know, the glass cleaned off and things like that. But they are much, much cheaper and deliver very, very close results to the modern day lens equivalents for a much cheaper price. There are, there are other brands, there are other vintage lens brands out there than just Minolta. Minolta is, Minolta is by no means the only vintage brand you can get. Uh, it's just the one that I use because I have the adapters and stuff and it's just easier to stick with that brand. For those new to the channel, I actually, um, the last video I made, I actually used this lens quite a lot. I got a photo, I got a few photos of the mountains. I got a photo of uh, the planet Jupiter and I've also in the past gotten a photo of the Orion Nebula and the Andromeda Galaxy with this lens. I may not put the Andromeda Galaxy picture up on the screen here because it's very, very bad. But um, anyways, I got a nice uh, railroad shot with this lens as well. And with the uh, with the Minolta 50 mil, I actually, I actually did a little bit of professional work with this lens uh, back when I was just kind of first starting professional, uh, you know, commercial photography. But uh, yeah, there you go, guys. That's how you can save a ton of money at the very beginning of your photography career. I hope this tip helped. If you're like me, you know, I was searching for all sorts of ways to save money and like things that I can I could do to you know become a, a better photographer in a you know faster way and um, these lenses were one of the one of the ways that I, I did that so thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please give it a, give it a thumbs up it helps out tremendously with the YouTube algorithm consider subscribing for more browsing the channel for more content if you want to do that see you guys next time